Yo, can you hear me? Yep. How's it going? How's it going? Hi. Hello, everyone. Can you hear okay? Yeah. Uh, can Can everyone hear the hear us fine? Is the sound okay? Can everyone see us? Okay, let's just move the browser. There we go. Let's just keep the uh, the music levels down as well. I'm just gonna try and balance off the music. I didn't oh, put good. Music, a good uh, yeah, I just put some background music on. You know, I, I quite, I quite like having a background music. <laughs> and uh, thank you for the login, um, Magic Coupons. So, here we are uh, with the BBC chat. <clears throat> Guys, you okay? Oh, okay. Right. We're all live now. Yeah, we're all good to good to kick yeah, off. Yeah, thank you for joining. Okay, well, everyone, thank you for joining. Um, I am Shen. Um, I am a Tekken player and also um, a lead designer for UIU and also a designer for Booking.com. And I am a British born Chinese person. A lot of people get BBC mixed up, actually. They think it's like British broadcasting or something. British what? British broadcasting. British broadcasting. Yeah. Oh, is that the yeah yeah? People get us mixed up with the um you know the the channel, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, hi, my name's Noda. I'm also BBC. My dad's from Hong Kong and my mum's from Malaysia, and I'm basically born in London. So. Nice, Thank nice. You. We're gonna be having a conversation tonight around a few topics, and it's mainly like about our experience and just sharing a few things and getting to know a little bit more about our own experiences growing up and if you guys have any questions or anything that you want to share um you can type it in as well we're going to be bringing our cultural specialist <laughs> in in like an hour or so um, yeah and i've got a few questions um for qq actually um which i've got written down so i might put you on the spot but yeah we'll see how it goes yeah some reason your camera's a little bit pixelated i'm not sure why yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yours is all fine, but maybe because I pulled it out too much. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's like a dial-up style. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. Guys, um, also, if you do uh, exclamation mark multi-twitch, uh, you'll be able to see Shen as well. So you'll be able to see us both together. Yeah, you don't need to have cam. It's okay. No, that's fine. We'll just invite you into the call. It's absolutely fine. Okay, apparently you're pretty quiet. Let's put your volume up a little oh, bit more. Really? Okay, can you hear her? Uh, chat, can you hear what she's saying? Turn her up. Oh, you have to go into Discord. That's so weird. Yeah, I can see my video is kind of pixelated. It could be my internet, actually. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, I can see what you mean now. Yeah, yeah. Because I can oh. see us both. Yeah. Can you hear me okay, guys? That's better. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's better. So uh, it's better. It's okay for me, but it might not be for the viewers. So I just want to make sure that the sound is okay. Obviously, when you're doing these type of podcasts, there's always some sort of uh, technical issues, technical problems, but all good. <clears throat> yeah, so I guess my first question is to Shen. And I want to ask him about just a bit about his background, like where his parents are from, what is it like for you growing up, and did you go to school here? Just a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. So my parents were originally from Hong Kong. Uh, they came into the UK in around the 70s, 80s, um, you know, to start a new life here. Um, I was born here, so I'm British born. So I've, I've been born in the north for quite some time. Um, so I've always been like quite a northerner. Um, with my background, my family used to speak to me always in Cantonese, so my English wasn't that great when I was a kid. Okay. Uh, I actually had to have like a private tutor to sort of help me catch up my English. I was a, a year behind in school as well, you know, just because my English wasn't up to scratch. And, um, oh. and I remembered when I was young that my teacher, um, if I struggled with anything uh, in terms of English, 
Um, she told me to draw it. She told me to try and communicate it with by drawing something. Oh, for drawing. Yeah, so she gave me an A3 pad uh, when I was younger. She gave me like, you know, Crayola and some belt tip pens back in the day. They were like the thing back in the day. So if I had trouble saying a word, then I would just draw it into the A3 pad. So a perfect example of this is when there were two kids playing football in school and on the playground. Um, and I really wanted to play with them. I just wanted to make some friends. I didn't really know anyone. And, and for me to communicate with them, I decided to draw the two of them with a ball in the middle. And I kind of drew myself in there. Then I just kind of just pointed and sort of like trying to indicate that I wanted to play with them. And then they just sort of said, oh, you want to play? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like getting dead excited. And then, you know, that's like how I came about knowing some English kids back in the day so like through through drawing and um and my drawings became better and better as the years gone by and my english gone better and better with my private tutor as well um and then i just kind of used drawing as a form of communication and then also a way for me to uh, break the ice with uh, kids in school so i used to draw like sonic the hedgehog mario ninjas ninja turtles that kind of thing um so it was like i was kind of yeah, I was kind of like different to most most kids in school. Uh, like the kids were really good at English and maths and stuff like that, but I was always been quite artistic and sort of sort of the same with my family as well. Like a lot of my family members are very um, academic, logical thinkers. You know, my brother being a perfect example. You know, he he studied aerospace engineering, and then there's me who's who was a graphic designer. So it's it's like two very different um, different. Um, ways of thinking in the family um, but my mum and dad's English got better and better as well you know like uh, during the years um, and you know like my English was still developing as well and then that's how I sort of developed like a Manchester sort of northern accent and then it's now affected my Cantonese now my Cantonese has kind of gone gone downhill now mm. it's kind of got that northern can uh, northern Manchester accent to it now <laughs> Um, and yeah, just kind of grew up uh, living with my parents and I studied in um, Liverpool John Moore University. Um, that was where I got my degree and everything like that. And then like basically just developed a career from that really. Um, but at first it wasn't, it wasn't easy because, you know, all my family members, they're all very, as I said, very academic, you know, like, uh, you know, some of them are like merchant bankers, some of them are lawyers brothers that was an aerospace, aerospace engineer and then there's me who's a graphic designer but then you know uh but somehow like you know i persisted i persi persisted in being a graphic designer and then my younger cousins also pers uh, pursued a career in, in in the creative industry so one of my cousins called ricky he's now a, an amazing photographer you know he wasn't very academic either he was he had really poor grades as well but he's now a very, very good photographer, like taking pictures for Michelin star restaurants and like um, products for Adidas and, and Nike and stuff like that. It's, it's completely crazy. So um, it's kind of weird, like how the creative industry, where, where I became part of the creative industry, wasn't really accepted at first. People didn't quite get it. I don't think it's that they don't um, don't respect it. I just don't think they understood what it was. Do you get what I mean? Like if you weren't like an accountant or if you weren't like a banker or something, then you're not really successful. Or if you don't run your own business, then you're not really successful. But like, I think- There expectations. Yeah, it? yeah, there, there was that expectation. But mm. however, um, with the fact that, I'll, you know, myself and my cousin Ricky, um, we're like examples that you, you can do what you want to do and still be successful. So. That's how I can, that's how my life kind of like changed about. Um, but you know, I saw it as like a, an interesting journey. I, I don't. I, I used to be quite spiteful towards it, but not anymore now. <laughs> you just grow up, don't you? Do you speak to your parents in Cantonese or English? Uh, I, I both really. Like my mum, I sometimes speak in English. My dad yeah. in Cantonese. Um, I mean, mom, my mum still has a little bit of that Chinese accent. My dad's got that Chinese accent as well. But yeah. you know what? Their English has really improved uh, from a long, long time ago. From a long time ago, they only just spoke to me in Cantonese. But the fact is now their English has, has gone a lot better. Um, you know, they can hold conversations together. My dad used to struggle now, but he used to struggle and used to have my mum translate for him. But he's, he's now able to hold a good conversation. 
really good. Yeah. My dad still hasn't learned English after about, I think, 40 years in the UK. All right. So imagine, yeah. He's so, we're still having to translate for him as well. But it's so interesting how you said about you speaking English later. Mm -hmm. Whereas for me, it was slightly the opposite. So I, actually, my first language is Cantonese. And it was, it says, yeah, you know, yeah. It's so on the... I don't know if you got these, but when you were growing up, did you do you have like my first tooth and all this stuff? And there was one section that's like the first language, and mm -hmm. my first language is actually Cantonese. Right. And they, my parents spoke to me in Cantonese a lot growing up, but then for me now, it's it's not my first language. I would say I'm a lot more confident in English. But mm -hmm. I actually went to Chinese school every weekend. Yeah, I went to Chinese you, school. I dropped school out. Well. I dropped yeah, out of Chinese school. school. Yeah, I dropped out of Chinese yeah. school when I was like fourteen. I just like, you know, decided to focus on, focus on my GCSEs, yeah. my um, end of year mm. exams. I didn't, um, yeah, I, didn't, I just didn't enjoy it. I just didn't think I was learning anything. You no, know, I, I definitely didn't learn anything, and I just mm. felt like I had to. I had to go. There were a lot of things growing up, like extracurricular things that I just had to do. It was swimming or extra maths lessons and because yeah, I was, yeah. I'm the oldest in the family as well so oh, a lot okay. of the things I, I had to do first whereas right. with my sister she didn't get the same like she could just do what she wanted whereas for me I had to sign up to these classes and oh really I didn't have much sort of play time with the other kids in my school did you um have to learn an instrument when you were younger yeah. as well. What what Guess instrument? What instrument? Is a piano. <laughs> was a piano or violin, wasn't it? It's either if you're a Chinese person, right? Like you your uh, you you know, like most parents will suggest you to learn the piano or the violin, right? Mm. But I went the opposite direction. I went, no, I'm learning guitar and the bass guitar. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. So I decided to learn the guitar and I started I played in like a a little teenage punk band back in the oh, day okay. you know what i mean what so, did your like... parents think of that did you, <laughs> i mean did they fund your lessons for you and, um i i can't well, yeah they did help fund lessons and stuff like that they mm. um i think they they do they were just like happy for me to do what i'm what i'm happy with really do you know what i mean as long as i was learning something but the main thing is like i wasn't really very i wasn't very academic i was pretty bad when it came to um college because i basically put my you know my guitar playing before anything else you know what i mean i was trying to i was trying to make it you know in um in a band and everything you know yeah. in this little teenage band um and i did really get bad um bad as level results like mm. when um when i started college that was when as levels came out you know what i mean like it would used yeah. to be just a levels and your first year didn't count mm -hmm. i i literally just um you know messed about for the first year and really buggered up my exams um, buggered up my results um and you know because that's because i was so obsessed with playing the guitar playing in the band that's where i met all my band members you know in college mm -hmm. and stuff like that um and it was it was pretty bad you know like i i, I got like use and stuff like that and then and then, right. and then the second year the second year of college i literally said to myself you know what I, I am I'm not gonna repeat a year. I do not want to stay another year in college. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna try mission the first year and the second year all at the same time. And I just oh. about passed. Just about, you know what I mean? It wasn't like amazing. It was probably just like C's and D's or what you call it, right? Yeah. But I still managed to get into university with um with the results. Um but to be honest with you, I don't really use my degree. I don't think any uh, any career that I've been to or any job interview I've been to no one really gave a toss about my my degree <laughs> no one really cared as long as what about the all they cared about was my experience um but yeah I mean I, I you know I I wouldn't say I was the most educated to be honest with you I, I was pretty much a, a bit of a rebel in the family you know playing guitar going out loads drinking you know what I mean partying and you know for me um my family my family were literally like it was new to them because I was the oldest in the family so me going through these phases whether it be drinking dating and all this stuff they weren't prepared for that they were like oh okay you know as is as is now dating you know um he's now dating you know he's now going out drinking you know it's like I think it's like because I'll always be seen as their little boy do you get what I mean I, it's like it's kind of like I think most Asian families are kind of like that but then when it was with my brother they were more prepared you know if he was to grow up and do the same things as i did at least they were more prepared for that now they all know how to 
react to certain things, you know what I mean? So like if he started dating, at least they know how to accept it a bit better. But because yeah. I was the older one, things were a bit new, like me dating and drinking, playing guitar or um, mm. not doing the, you know, like a like a, an academic degree. It was it was very much like, well, this is it was kind of like they weren't sure where I'm gonna go with my life. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But did um, they ever communicate with you in terms of just asking you questions like what do you want to do or? Oh yeah, sort yeah. Of indirectly, the quite sort of clear oh yeah yeah definitely from you yeah so because i i buggered about a lot in college and this is this is my own fault that's because like after gcse's i became really lazy i became really i put fun before anything else do you know what i mean right. um but now i remember that at the time my, my my dad got really angry with me he said to me like you know where where are you going with your life right now you know like what are you going to do with playing guitar you know what are you going to do with you know this art stuff that you're doing you know like are you actually going to start how are you going to you know run your life how are you going to start raising a family and stuff like that you know you, you need to get your shit together you know like this, this is not how i raised you you know that kind of thing and um and that, that was the point where like i kind of thought shit you know i need to get my life together but i was still the same i was still you know caring about having fun more than my education and i think what really hit me more than anything um, where it was when I went to like a family gathering uh, in a restaurant with my mum and my brother yeah. and uh, and I think what really hit me hard was one was when my mum spoke so proudly of my younger brother because you know my, my brother he's smart he's hard he was very hard working as well so you know um, like when my mum was like going oh yeah this is my younger son He's going to be going to Imperial University. He's going to be an aerospace engineer. And then, like, all these aunties and uncles are like, oh, wow, that's amazing. You know, and then, like, oh, what about your older son? What's he going to do? And then my mum's like, yeah, he's going to be a graphic designer. Um, you know, I'll, I'll let him do what he wants. You know what I mean? Um, I'll let him learn and stuff like that. And then, you know, at the time, like, I think she did. She said this to me. I remember that I got so angry about it. You know, I got very upset about that situation, about like, you know, I wasn't getting any praise or anything. But to be honest with you, at the time, I kind of deserved it because I did mess about a bit. But um, but that moment motivated me. And the reason why that motivated me is because I wanted that same praise from my mum. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, I, wa I didn't want my mum to feel embarrassed of me. And, uh, and I did need to get my act together. You know and then i was like and i pretty much like based my life around that moment right if i'm gonna do anything i want that praise mm -hmm. i want that level of praise that my mum was giving to my brother um which is why like i just kind of dropped everything i like right i'm gonna drop my guitar i'm gonna stop um messing about you know and uh, going out loads i'm gonna like go to university and study as hard as i can and really get that degree because like my granddad my granddad who lives who lived in hong kong at the time he had like a load of pictures of all the grandchildren, the graduation pictures on his wall. Yeah. And I remembered specifically, I was the one that's gonna be next. And I did not want to break that chain. Do you know what I mean? I looked at him think, and I remember going to my granddad's and thinking, you know what, I don't want to be the one to stop that, that, that good run of all the, um, all my family graduating and stuff like that. And, uh, and I was really determined to have my picture up on that wall you know that was another determined uh, determined factor and that's how i like sort of turned my life to re life around but mm. you know um, i guess the question really is i mean how do you know it's something that you want to do versus doing it for others that was uh, sort of yeah yeah that was that was when yeah I, I i struggled with that to be honest with you when i was younger i kind of I kind of tried to be successful just to prove other people wrong. Do you know what I mean? And I've, I've right. like, I just literally wanted to be seen and heard. I wanted that mm. attention. I wanted praise. I, I, I got addicted to praise, if I'm being honest with you. Mm. Because like, if you if you think about Chinese culture, it's like even Chinese New Year, it's all about health and wealth. If you yeah. think about it, you know what I mean? Like all the red lucky wallets and stuff yeah. like that. The money that you give to your to your nephews, to your nieces, to your grandchildren, you know, like it's a lot of the Chinese superstition and culture is a lot to do with money, right? Mm. 
And then um, for me, like, I, I was so obsessed with trying to like, you know what, I'm going to try and earn as much money as I can. And, you know, I really want to be up there. I want to drive a fast car. I want a nice house and everything, you know, and I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it all over Facebook. I'm going to show people how successful I am. Do you know what I mean? But then that there was that internal struggle, you know, like, is this who I really want to be? This isn't really what I want to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I have English friends that are like don't have that much. They don't have like you know all this materialistic stuff but they're happy with themselves do you get what i mean like they knew what they wanted they were just happy with what they have and me i was never satisfied i was always like you know what the chinese culture is like this the chinese culture is all about status and wealth i need to if i want to get recognition i need these things i need like a nice car I need a nice house um i need to be um earning lots of money have a great career and stuff like that but if you think about it, if you don't have any of those things, say like if you, you don't have your car, you don't have your property, you don't have your job, what do you have left? You know? And it's like, um, so that's when I started realizing if I didn't have any of those things left, what do I have left? There's, there's nothing left, you know, uh, except an empty shell. So that's why I decided to work on my mental health more than anything, you know, um, for the last few years after recognizing this whole status thing, it's all just a mindset, you know? Um, and when it came to my parents, like what they, what happened is like, yeah, back in the day, it used to be all about status and wealth and stuff like that. But I think what's happened now is that Chinese parents are slowly evolving. They're starting to adapt to the change. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, like technology's changing now. And I think mindsets and traditions are slowly changing. But you will start, you, you will, st get like um parents chinese parents that are still very traditional but i'm kind of lucky in that regard that my parents evolved with the times as well it was a le it's a learning curve for them just as much yeah. as it is for me and i think that's how my relationship with my parents really developed and really become a lot better you know obviously before it was very it was kind of fragmented it was like you know we're both trying to figure out what you know what we both wanted what i wanted as a person and what they wanted for me is trying to yeah. figure that out but now that it's kind of evolved over the last few years um you know our relationship has gone a lot better and uh you know i can't ask for anything more really so yeah what about you then what about you did you have any my, issues back in the past is a, yeah my story is a bit different in the sense that my parents i mean first of all my mum came to the country when she was in her 20s right so she was already i guess westernized right and her english was really, really good and she met my dad in mm -hmm. Chinatown, London Chinatown. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, like, like the old day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the old and he was, you know, doing his chef work because that's what that's what they did. They did you work in a takeaway as well? Did you have to work yeah, in a so, takeaway res yeah, uh, so I'll restaurant? Yeah, get onto that. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> but what happened was they, you know, their relationship was a bit rocky. And when right. I turned ten, mm -hmm. they had their divorce. So oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Mm. That's fine, but and when you're when you're a child at that age, mm -hmm. and especially the Chinese culture, we had to hide. Like I, I had to basically lie to people, to um, and said that they were still together, right? Right. Because it's okay. the whole sort of safe face. You know, we can't tell people. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, your mum and dad are divorced. That's not that's not good because we need to keep up a keep up a certain facade, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. that's the time when I struggled with a lot with identity. You know, my parents are obviously divorced and they don't get along. But now I have to say to others, yeah, my, you know, you know, like, and hear them saying, oh, this is my wife, this is my husband, when I knew it wasn't. So I think that, you know, at that point, the relationship between my parents it's never been like really really close because they worked full time and yeah. i actually had a childminder to look after me and my sister mm -hmm. so from the age of maybe 8 to 15 that time period i was um there was like different sort of childminders that came to look after us right, so i never right. really had one solid uh you know home stable home environment i guess mm -hmm. so yeah in that sense was interesting and then there was there were cases where um, things you know got really rocky at home and I didn't get along. I was kind of like you, a bit of like a rebel at school, and oh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just trying to get some praise and get a bit of attention. And I was you know the older child, so I got a lot of pressure. 
Um, I didn't study well at all. I used to bunk off school <laughs> to the age of. Until Did you? I got to about yeah. I just I was like I'm not. Oh I'm not School, you know who who took me to school, right? Like a childminder, and mm-hmm. then as soon as she dropped me off, I'll just leave. I'll just walk out the the school, and I'll go around the backs of the, like the tennis courts or whatever, just walking no smoking or something. Yeah, like I just, I didn't care. Like you, you can't check on me because you're not there, right? This is this is my way of rebelling. Like oh. You're not at my parents' evening. You're not at my assemblies or anything. So, right. what, you know, so that was the kind of time, you know, during the teenage years, I mm-hmm, guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when, I think when my mum eventually moved out, because they were divorced, but they were still living together, which was really odd for me and my identity. When yeah. my mum moved out and she got remarried, it was then my dad, me and my sister. And it's been like that for about, I guess, 15 years. Oh, so, okay. And he hasn't really developed that fast with, like you said, your parents with the technology. And yeah, yeah. He's all, he's just trying to play a role of the father, but also having two girls and trying to understand mm-hmm. us as well. So I think it's been difficult for, for us, but now it's a little bit better. That's good <laughs> like, to hear. You know, just That's having that journey hear. of yeah, understanding, yeah. like you said, you know, are you doing it for yourself or are you doing it for, for others? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And just finding that balance somewhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think as as you said, like you know, I'm just I was trying to be successful just to prove people wrong, you know, and mm. uh, and I didn't feel that was a, a happy way of living. Um, mm. And in the end, I kind of thought thought to myself, there must be an easier way or happier way to live life than to try and prove people wrong or trying to live up to the standard of other people. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, there's always oh yeah, there's comparisons like. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it's like a, a normal thing for Chinese parents to go like, oh, what are your, what what, you need, what you what are your kids doing? doing? You know, what are your kids <laughs> doing? You know, like, oh, are they go, which yeah. university are they going to? Or where are they working now? And they can be you in know? front of you as well. You know, yeah, they can be yeah. comparing you w- yeah. whilst you're there and saying, yeah. oh, where are you going? UCL, oh, that's good. Oh, where? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But then, like, uh, you know, I kind of just got to that point where thinking, what, what am I doing this for? Do you know what I mean? I'm not even happy, and no one's giving me the praise that I want. You know what I mean? At the, at the end of the day, I was like, why is no one praising me? No, why is no one giving me the, um, you know, the praise that I wanted? And do you uh, feel that? Do you feel that actually, Asian parents praise a lot anyway? I mean, what's your sort of experience? Uh, I know, I know, my mum. Um, she didn't want to praise me and she she told me this she told me this um and i think it was a it was a good tactic and what she did um so she didn't want to praise me because she didn't want me to be complacent and because she knew that in college i i tossed about too much i just didn't do you know i was a bit of a rebel didn't do well and if i get complacent i tend to slip that way so i think she oh, okay. she purposely not praised me that much because she wanted to keep me motivated to keep me going you know what i mean to keep me like a keep aspiring to be better um but then like i took it very literally you know like i'm gonna be better you know i'm gonna make sure i get all the praise that I, from every chinese family whatever you know mm-hmm. i'm gonna make sure that every chinese family is gonna be singing my praises you know but then like it got tiring really tiring i got so tired of it um and that that's when i started realizing you know what i i need i'm not happy this is not the way i want to live my life um and then that's when i started realizing you know what i i need to see someone i need i need to i need some guidance in in terms of like how how should i gain purpose of what where my life's supposed to be um and then after i went through therapy and i never told my mum and dad about it to be honest with you because i didn't want them to worry you know like my mum and dad are proper warriors you know what i mean like they worry a lot um, my dad's the kind of person that will ring me up if i say like if i first time i moved out my dad will ring me up and start saying oh as have you eaten yet have you eaten like if you're not eating i'll come over i'll cook you something to eat you know what i mean like my dad was very very protective and I know what my dad's like. He, he he worries a lot, which is why I never tell them a lot of stuff that I go through, my, my internal struggles, because I kind of want to prove to them that I can make it on my own. So I kind of went to therapy on my own, own accord. So rather than going through the NHS, I just decided just to go to therapy and pay for private care. Sure. Um, and that's when I realized after speaking to therapy that I wasn't really living my life 
for myself. Um, I was just living life just to please others or trying to gain recognition from other people or validate myself through other people. But but then she asked me the main question, what do you think of yourself? It's like, be honest with yourself. Like, what do you yeah. think of yourself? And then I just sort of said, oh, I, I want to be successful. I want, no, 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 no. Not what you want to be. Where what, what do you think of yourself now? I couldn't answer her. I could not give her a straight answer. I literally just said to her, uh, I think I'm a good guy. I, I think I'm nice. But then she was like, okay, are you telling yourself that? Or, you know, do, what, do, what do you really feel about yourself? What do you really know about yourself? And then I couldn't give her a straight answer. And that's when I started like, realizing, you know what? I need to work on myself more than anything then forget about other people and start figuring myself out you know what do i want in life and stuff like that um, i wonder if part of it is also to do with the culture because if you compare a collective culture versus individualistic right yeah as our, our culture we don't tend to be encouraged to think for ourselves i don't know if it's yeah yeah yeah, at all, yeah but we, that's we true don't really get encouraged to say oh yeah these, these are your own dreams go and reach them we'll support yeah, you yeah. whatever you want it's more of what can you give back to the family or, or how your your job and your choices mm -hmm, actually mm -hmm. affect the family and this community as a whole yeah, so if you're yeah, not doing yeah. what we expect or what the whole collective na nature of this culture wants then mm -hmm you're you know dishonoring or you know, yeah yeah or exactly like that. So I guess <laughs> how much of it is the culture and what we're brought up to think like and then trying to find that individualistic mm -hmm, style mm -hmm. in this whole collective culture yeah yeah definitely um I, and i think i think part of it is having the the identity crisis as well whether mm. You know, like obviously, when you're at home, you're surrounded by your your family. You know, very right. traditional. Um, you know, you got your Chinese culture at home, but then when you're in school or when you're at work, then you've got like very Westernized people, and then they sometimes right, influence yeah. the way you think as well. And then you have very conflicting ways of thinking between the two of them. Do you get what I mean? Like, and that that's where I'm starting to get a bit of an identity crisis because I'm like, okay, am I a bit too Western the way the way I'm thinking, or am I a bit too traditional with my you know being Chinese yeah. and all that and then you get this weird mishmash and blend um, yeah. of like you know um, of culture and it somehow it, it, it sort of throws you off a little bit like what am I meant to be because I'm not I'm not I'm not British enough to be hanging around with you know my people at work who love going to pubs you know what I mean like right. going for a pint and stuff like that I mean I like going to a bar now and again but yeah. I'm not a really big pub drinker, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then again, like a lot of my Chinese friends, they love going to karaoke, but I hate going karaoke. I bloody hate it. Right. I can't stand it. And I'm like, well, I'm not, I don't feel very, I don't feel Chinese mm -hmm. enough to be hanging around with these people, yeah, you know what I mean? And then, yeah. and it's like, where do I fit in? I don't fit in anywhere. And then that's where like, I, I wanted to find more like-minded British born uh, mm. Chinese people to sort of hang out with. It doesn't have to be Chinese. It can be, yeah. you know, British-born Vietnamese or a Western-born uh, uh, Filipino or something like that. You know, I just wanted someone that is like um, of Asian heritage that I can hang out with that sort of go through the same struggles as I have. You know what I mean? And uh, and it's very hard to find people like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's very very hard to find people like that, and it's it's kind of crazy. And uh, yeah, I and to be honest with you, I. I yeah, I can't stand karaoke. <laughs> it's a very Chinese thing to do to go karaoke. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you finish you finish working in a takeaway, and what do you, what do everyone do? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, let's go chunky. You know, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go sing, let's go sing. Let's go sing. Let's go sing. Yeah, yeah. K bar is quite popular. K two, K two, yeah. K two. Is it still there? I, 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 my friend, my friend still go there without fail, and I'm like, I, I think I'm gonna skip it this week, and I've not been for like two, three years. I've been probably like once or twice, like over the last year, but I, I really rarely go. I try not to go as much. It's not really my thing. It's quite interesting what you mentioned about identity, because for me, that came about more when I went back to Hong Kong, so where my dad's from. Um, I went back as a teenager to visit mm -hmm. and then I always had comments saying oh you're really like fat and 
they they're quite sort of direct. So, you know, they haven't seen me in years, and they're like, "Oh, you're really fat," and "Oh, you know, <laughs> like they'll be quite mean." What is that? Um, what they said to you? Yeah, my relatives. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, you're really fat," because I guess the the sizes were really different. Like when I went shopping in. Uh, Hong Kong, like I was like an extra, extra large, right? But then in the UK, really I'm, like, considered petite, right? Right, right. So, okay. You know, that's when I started. Like things, things like that started to make me, I guess, reflect more on identity. You know, yeah, like, comments, yeah. Or you don't look like you're from around here. Or I'll get my hair cut in Hong Kong, and they're like, or you did you study abroad? Or you know, mm, you're not. Mm. There's something about you. You're not really like that Chinese or. You know, people will comment and be, oh, your Cantonese is really hard to understand. And all of these things kind of made me, I guess, think about my identity. Like, yeah. I'm yeah. not accepted in Hong, on Hong Kong because mm -hmm. people look at me like I'm a Western girl. But mm -hmm. then in the UK, you know, hanging around, like, I was the only Chinese person in my whole school anyway. Mm -hmm. They would think that I'm from China. Or yeah, you're just that token Chinese or, person, right? Right, right. So that's the point where I started to think, okay, actually I don't fit in, like you said. Yeah, I don't yeah, fit in, yeah, uh, yeah. And I don't know, I don't know who I am, and all these expectations, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and trying that. These is quite clashing, don't you think? Like the oh, yeah, Western yeah. and I, Eastern, yeah, they're quite, definitely. quite clashing in this in this that sense. Yeah, yeah. So no, we're not going to karaoke then. Okay, <laughs> I like karaoke actually. I I got into it at it, university. I'll I'll have to be really really drunk if you want to take me to karaoke. So I'll probably I'll probably end up hogging the mic anyways when I had a bit to drink. But yeah. like normally, if someone said to me, "Oh, let's go karaoke," I'd be like, oh, "Do we have to? You know what I mean? Can't we just go to a bar Asian in Northern flush. Quarter?" I was like, uh, "Do I get Asian flush?" Yeah. Believe it or not, I um I started becoming quite um. I can take my drinks now. I used to be such a lightweight. I'll be honest with you. Like I had oh. Chinese friends right that brought me out. And they, they just killed me within the first hour and I'll be carried out the club because I couldn't take my drinks. Mm. But I've started to take, I, I learned how to pace myself, I suppose, you know, when it comes yeah. to drinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, I get, I get Asian flesh. Do you get, do you go bright yeah, red and face, everything? Yeah, my yeah, face yeah. I f yeah. Yeah, I, I get really hot when I had a bit to drink as well. So yeah, I think I do get like, uh, I don't think I had it as bad as I used to, but I'd still get the flush, you know what I mean? I go a bit red. But not as red as I um, when I was like in my early twenties. Yeah. And you're not yeah. even that drunk, right? Like you go red, but then you're not even yeah. that drunk. But then on the outside, people are like, oh, you're "Okay." Like, Whoa. Yeah, yeah. It's like, are you angry? What's up with you? <laughs> <laughs> you're like yeah, yeah. Like bloodshot. Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I had half a pint. Like, what's up? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I don't get it as bad now. But I used, I used to, used to get it quite bad. Yeah. I want to talk to you about also your your friend circles as well because you mentioned earlier about I guess being closely affiliated more so with uh, people that have um, you know parents that are from abroad and you know you find you can connect with them yeah I mean did that sort of help with understanding who you are and your identity or was it just more you were just wanted someone to like talk to about your experiences growing up um, I think I've learned quite a lot through the friends that I've met, you know, by meeting their families and stuff like that. Um, and also people that I've dated in the past as well, you know, in terms of like, you know, um, tradition and or culture or what you call it. So I, I dated, um, you know, someone from mainland China before, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like originated from mainland China. Um, and the, the there's like a, a big culture clash here, you know, like, because you know, our families are from, Hong, are from Hong Kong, right? So, you know, even though we think they're quite traditional, it's a lot more westernized compared to some of the traditions in mainland China, do you know what I mean? Compared to this family that I was dating with anyways. Um, and I remembered for the first time when I went to meet her parents, the first thing they asked me was like, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I'm a graphic designer. And they're like, oh, good pay. And I was like, I like to think so, enough to live on. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like they're very judgmental. Um, and I remembered the dad sort of asking me, like, one time, he sort of asked me one time, sort of like, do you, do you wish to marry my daughter one day? And I was like, what? <laughs> I was just dating your He's daughter. Yeah. I was like, what is going on? It's like, mm. Uh, I don't know what you know about this, but you know, if, um, 
in our tradition, you you give us money, you know, like, and I was like, how much? Like that. And I was like, it was like, it was like five figures, you know what I mean? And I was like, I was like, what? Really? And I remembered, I remembered like, I don't have that kind of money in my savings account, you know what I mean? And I'm not even thinking about marriage, but I remembered sort of like speaking to my ex about it, saying like, oh, you know, I don't, I'm not sure I agree with that because I'm dating you at the end of the day and shouldn't I be marrying you? Like if we were to marry ever, do you know what I mean? Not saying that we're going to get married now, but if we were to marry, shouldn't it be out of love than me paying your parents? You know, it's almost like I'm buying you. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. But apparently that is like a tradition. It's like, it's, yeah. it's, it's called what you call a dowry, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, to prove that you can look, to prove that you can look after you yeah. can look after the daughter and stuff like that, right? Um, for me, I I personally felt that was it was a bit of a crazy concept for me. Like at the time, I didn't quite understand it. Do you get what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, respect to people that actually, you know, do it. You know, that actually pay it off. But I, I for me, I, I I couldn't. I didn't have that kind of money to, you know you know to do that and um i've learned through many interactions with people about their traditions and their culture and stuff like that and then sometimes it kind of makes me feel like you know what i don't have it as bad as some people do you get what i mean mm -hmm. but i mean i'm in no position to talk about some of their you know their, their situations and stuff like that but it kind of made me realize you know what i'm not maybe i don't have it as bad as what i thought do you know what i mean i just gotta get used to these culture type things you know what i mean so what about yourself i guess for me it's different because maybe there's a different sort of pressure for females and uh for oh, you know, okay so for me i guess i never really had that pressure from home because my mum left um when i was maybe like 15 right i told you she left and then she got remarried so for me, I didn't have the mum there like nagging or asking mm -hmm. me, oh, when are you going to get married or anything like that. So it was more sort of just always trying to be like the best daughter, especially with my dad. Mm -hmm. like, ne always trying to get this sort of praise and approval, right? Right, um, right. Well, from a young age, so always ba basically like at school, I was one person and then at home, I was another person. Okay. And then it sort of came up more at uni. So at uni, I was like, just went crazy. I was like, full ABG, <laughs> ABG, full like, you know, drinking, <laughs> didn't, didn't study, um, never like, it basically like what happened at school kind of happened again at uni. Like I would just like skip lectures or like turn up drunk. And I, I actually got fired once from my part-time job because I was really? drinking so much. No. Focus on my part-time oh, work at uni. So for the first year, I was just like, "Rah, you know, I could be, I could, I'm free." I cannot imagine like, you doing that. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh yeah. my god! So I was just constant. I was just like, "Oh my god, I'm just gonna." That's like, funny. This I'm is, sorry. This is my first, like, this is like my first <laughs> case of freedom, right? Um, but then everything else outside of that was, I must uphold a specific, you know, like. I must uphold a specific view so that my parents would always see me as the you know the oldest child the one that will do well yeah. so i studied psychology at university um and my mom was like what's what psychology like is that mm. gonna, you're gonna be a doctor like psychologist right like yeah yeah, and yeah sometimes yeah. she would say that to her her friends like oh my daughter's a psychologist um and then yeah she's like clinical psychologist and stuff and she would try to exaggerate it a bit more oh make and it sound better than it is yeah, like it sound really better, sound yeah. like premium <laughs> yeah and, I, and yeah she she did similar things i guess what you mentioned earlier about your mum and say about your your brother yeah, like my, yeah my sister is i guess similar ish to your brother like she went mm -hmm. to a grammar school um she did really well you know went to uni and just did really really well mm -hmm. and sometimes she would compare a bit um, right. not, not so much now, but like definitely early on, she would compare and say, "Oh, you know, my young, you know, my youngest daughter, she goes to grammar school, you know, like all girls grammar school." Oh like man! In the, in the, <laughs> then, yeah, 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 I, I, one, yeah, she, uh, yeah, she, that's <laughs> familiar. Yeah, very yeah, familiar. So I can kind of relate with you in that sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like going back to what I mentioned earlier about sort of always trying to get approval. Mm. Like I, I understood. Um, couple of years ago so only quite recently that actually there's you know th they might be proud of you but they will never really say they will yeah. never really explicitly you know like for my experience anyway like my dad and my mum would never really say to me oh I'm really proud of you or like 
they will mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. find something to criticize and it made me think about this a bit more like why do they do that um, yeah. and upon like talking to you and the other people like I realized that maybe and actually QQ can answer this later on our cultural specialist <laughs> but like maybe you can answer this but <laughs> that's our nickname for a minute <laughs> cultural, cultural yeah, specialist <laughs> but I'm thinking like why why do the, the Asian parents like criticize what why is that the first thing they do is find something negative to say yeah and I yeah. think that is maybe because of their what what image that they uphold maybe they were taught as a child that if you could see something negative or something to improve on then you're more intelligent in some way that you you know you don't just accept but you say oh hold on you can improve there or you can improve there or mm-hmm. you can strive to be better there so then the whole praise doesn't come because they want to see they want to just be seen as more intelligent because they have the ability to pick something negative right yeah so i don't yeah. know maybe qq can yeah yeah yeah, oh, we can um, we can speak about that later. But that's yeah. sort of my experience, really. Yeah. I, yeah. As 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 I said before, um, reason why my mum didn't want to praise me, like like she like I just said before that um, she wanted to make sure that I don't become complacent. That if I keep getting praise, I'm just gonna be like, yeah, that'll do. That's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't need to aspire to be anything bigger. I'm already getting the praise, you know. And um, and I think that that was like why she decided to sort of like not praise me as much but to sort of mm-hmm. like ground me a little bit like you know you you kind of need to humble yourself a little bit more mm-hmm. you know which yeah. is why like she decided not to you know big me up in a big way <laughs> mm-hmm. but i think it worked because it made me more motivated but then like now when she praises me it feels really genuine you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. it isn't she's not praising me because she has to or yeah. because she's trying to keep me happy she's actually now praising me because you know i've changed as a person i've become mature if you like i've grown up mm. a lot i grew, did a lot of growing up and the way my mum now praises me it feels heartfelt genuine you know and then, then when she said to me um because you know i went i went through quite a, a really tough year last year uh you know through through divorce and stuff like that and i you know obviously went through a few mental issues as well you know we're going to therapy but then i remembered when i spoke to my mum uh when i decided to bring my mum uh, out of the blue and just to sort of tell her that you know uh, i'm grateful for whatever she's done for me that i love her love her very very much and um and then she said you know what as i knew all along you were struggling and um and you know why i didn't ring up and i said no why because I was waiting for you to come to me. And then that was when I knew for facts that my mum has changed as well. She evolved as well. She evolved, yeah, like you said, yeah. Yeah, she so I, I knew for a fact that, you know, my mum has changed for the better as well. She understood me a lot more. And then when she said to me, Ez, I want to tell you that I'm proud of you. I'm proud of what you've done over the last year. I'm proud of where you are right now and um you know i I love you i just want you to know that and that alone yeah was enough to keep me grounded keep me happy and you know it it made me like a better person now you know knowing that i've got the love of my parents i finally got you know the praise of my parents a Mm. heartfelt praise but in a way where i didn't do it out of you know the, the the chinese norm where i have to get a car get a uh, earn a lot of money or become a doctor or something i earned my mum's praise through struggle you know through hard struggle and for me to sort of come out of that and to my mum to sort of say i'm proud of you and i love you that that was like the turning moment for me you know what i mean and then that's when i started like living life a lot more positively and started living life for for myself and i didn't have to worry about these expectations of you know the Chinese culture or the Chinese community mm. because my mum now doesn't care about that my mum used to my mum used to really care about what other people think you know like oh you know I'm, uh, yeah. but now she's like you know what as just do what makes you happy because you proved that you can look after yourself you've done it all on your own I'm proud of you and and you know do what makes you happy as because I'll always be here and that was you know a lot of shit coming off my shoulders the massive weight off my shoulders like i do not need to impress anyone i don't need to find praise or get all this stuff to validate myself i'm now happy 
because I know that my mum and my dad, my family, they all love me and I don't need to be super successful or have riches in order to be happy now because they're happy for me and I'm I'm happy with myself so and I think it's, it's taken years and years to to get to that point I think mm. and you know that's I think it's not just a culture thing but it's like a mental thing as well but but, but culture did play a massive part in that and learning to let that go because I've learned to let go of that strict traditional culture and I think my mum and dad have learned to let it go as well and that's what made our, made my life and my brother's life a lot easier if that makes sense yeah definitely and yeah. just having a look on your chat dark side cloud said that you know our parents were brought through hard labor um and that's right i mean in terms of my experience my dad as soon as he came over here age 27 mm -hmm. he started working and then he opened up the takeaways different takeaways yeah but when the marriage broke down between my parents that's when you know things got a bit rocky because he mm -hmm, then had mm -hmm. to just continue working but without her help to translate because he still to this day hasn't learned english um so right. now i have to take you know the role of uh, interpreting or booking appointments for him or if he can't read the sign that says there's a parking fine mm -hmm. i have to pay the parking fine just, just little things like that if you can't yeah, read yeah. the english yeah is, is still a little bit and i still for those who don't know i still live with my um dad i, I live with my dad um and my sister i'm 30 turning 31 soon mm -hmm. and i'm living mm -hmm. at, at home with my with my dad and my sister who's three years younger than me and my mum's um remarried uh and she lives elsewhere like 45 minutes away but what you mentioned there in your chat is i i think like it took me maybe tw like i don't know like 15 years to hug my dad like because to hug your dad because they're, oh, yeah, okay. okay. they're not a very yeah yeah like, the way we're brought up we're not yeah, very le like, you know, like you said dark side you know about affection and human connection yeah yeah, like, yeah. saying i love you is like, like whoa like if you say it it's, I don't know if, it's even, yeah yeah, right, I, yeah I don't think I've ever heard my dad say that yeah or my mom yeah. actually but like you know that the whole I think I made I tried to make like connection by like just hugging my dad and it was so awkward like he just would tense up and he would just sort of he's like what are you doing pat, like yeah yeah it was like not normal so I think yeah. that was the sort of the, the time where I tried to, to get some connection mm. and uh, mm. some affection in that way um, right and yeah but obviously now things are things are a bit better i think he's you know he's almost what 70 now so he's he's adapted a little bit but i still would say it's difficult sometimes to like live with him um because of our views and what i want to do versus what like he wants me to do mm -hmm. yeah that's that's uh yeah that's an interesting story i remember um i remember i was much more affectionate with my grandma than i did what than i was with my parents because uh, my grandma looked after me and my brother when me mum and dad were working at the time so i was always very used to being affectionate with my grandma but then um it just like it's, as time goes on like it's almost like you know me and my parents like the the these walls are slowly being knocked down and we're becoming more affectionate and like showing a lot more love in the family now like before it was very very you know it's very closed off like you know my mum will be like make sure you study make sure you get the grades or whatever you know make sure you get your life on track but like as as we grow older it just starts to seem like i think i think we're starting to realize how short life is and you know you can't just live throughout the rest of your life having um difficulties with your family so we kind of I've learned to let that go. My parents have learned to let that go. And then we just kind of become, I mean, you know, I have no issues just hugging my mum now, you know, like, hey, mum, are you yeah. doing? You know, and like, hey, uh, what's for dinner? You know, being cheeky and stuff. Yeah. And my mum will be, you know, she used to be like, you know, if I used to do that, she would be like, hey, what are you doing? It's like, it's like, hang hoi, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> you know, like, if, if people don't know what hang hoi means, it means like, move or get the fuck out, you know what I mean? But um, she used to be like, that, oh, what, 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 you know what I mean? But now it's like, it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, like, tour, tour, sit, yeah, sit, yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, sit down, have a, have a, have something to drink, have something to eat, and you know, it's quite wholesome, you know, mm. so. Yeah, that's why I always go back to my parents now. Like, I see them as much as I can um, when I get some free time. So, but yeah, it's mm. it's good to have that sort of tradition sort of out the way. And I think that's always been like, a, um, what can I say? Like, an obstacle for most British-born Chinese people 
in fact, most Chinese people even, or even Asian families, there's always that expectation, you know? Like I noticed hanging around with um, my English friends uh, that their parents are a lot more laid back, you know what I mean? Like yeah, a perfect example, of, perfect example of this is when um, there was like a school party or something like that. Like I remember in school, um, the parents, all the all the all my English friends' parents, they were like, "Yeah, you can go out, have a party," and you know they didn't care how what time they arrived back home. They could arrive at like twelve, one o'clock at night, you know. But I remember very specifically my mum and dad. My mum and dad would be like, "Be back here by nine o'clock," and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, you got school tomorrow. You know, you need to sleep." I was like, you know, but that that's when I started realizing like how laid back, you know, the um, my English friends were you know that their coach is very very laid back compared to mine um and i remembered like my mom was very very protective of where i went out at night you know like thinking about i had a bike and everything so like if i wanted to ride to the park my mom will always try and keep tabs on me you know make sure that i don't go too far but then like i have friends that just do what they want they just go out they can just and i'm like oh i wish i could live like that but then you know just sort of realize you know um yeah, just just kind of realized how free they were, but then again, yeah, it's just it's just the difference, isn't it? Like it's just the stricter stricter culture, I suppose. Definitely, <clears throat> I remember I wasn't even allowed to go to sleepovers. Do you remember, like? I don't oh know yeah. I, yeah, I, I wasn't allowed to go for sleepovers, and my dad would be, you know, why would you go for sleepovers? You've got a bed at home, like. Yeah. <laughs> at home. <laughs> like it's really strict. Like, and then you know, school discos. Oh, I wasn't actually allowed to go to school discos. Um, I never learned to ride a bicycle as well, or uh, because like my friends would go out and they'll go cycling around the area, yeah. and I would have to like study for my Chinese school in the weekends, or you know I'd have all these extracurricular things that I had to do mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. I didn't have much like play time. Yeah, um, yeah. As as a as a kid, and I think partly that's why during university and I guess secondary school I rebelled like a bit. Oh <laughs> really? Right, right. Because <laughs> I didn't have that freedom. I guess I'm just thinking. You know, upon yeah, the yeah. That, you know, after school, okay, I need to study now. I have private, tu- you know, I had tutoring as well. Yeah. Um, hey. You know, like from a young Thanks age, you know, I had all these extracurricular things to do. So yeah, I was also envious of of people who had that, who had that freedom. I guess to just go out and. Be like okay, what they wouldn't ask like what time you're back. They just hey. like, okay, just stay safe. Thanks for follow. Fine, yeah. <laughs> so oh. I think what um what we can do maybe take like a couple of minutes break and then we can bring um QQ in for the call. Yeah, what sure. Yeah, so sure, sure. About some questions that we have. So QQ, if you would like to introduce yourself, um, like on you can do it in in my chat and then you can do it on the call as well. And then we'll take like a five minute break and then we'll invite you into the call, okay? Sure. Um, I'm reading some of the comments as well. Some yeah. people have actually experienced the same thing as we did. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Willow, I'm probably not the only one, but my family were just happy I wasn't stuck working in a takeaway for the rest of my life. And apparently, Willow was envious of people who went out at weekends mm. and he was bashing walks in the takeaway. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, well, um, I, I don't think you would have been a proper Chinese person if you didn't work in a takeaway or a restaurant of some sort. And uh, Swagmaster, oh gosh, my parents were exactly like that, except they never let me go out at night. And then Tales of Mr. M said, my parents were like, you've done it once before, why would you want to go again? <laughs> so yeah. All right, I'll see you guys in five. All right, see you guys in five. Catch you later. <laughs> Yo, do you mean it? Same. Recess. <laughs> Wait, let me go to the toilet. Be right back.
Hey, thanks for follow. What questions do you have for QQ? Because I got tattoos as well, so that would be a good one too.
Hello, can you guys hear me fine? Yeah, I can hear you. Right. Yep. yep. Hi. Okay. Right. Um, just, yeah, just before then, yeah. So I probably won't cover very much of my story if at all because there's so much stuff to unpack and I don't think we have. Okay, okay. Let's go, let's go. All right, hold on. Let me. Uh, oh, it's messed up my layout a bit. No, yes, yeah, it's well, messed up on. my layout. <laughs> no. Um. Just gonna pop into your we... Twitch uh, stream and just introduce myself a little bit. So I wonder if I. Hold on a if sec. We... Yeah, it's messed up my layout. <laughs> I'll tell you what. No done. Game. Okay, right. Let's uh, just put you on Discord like this, and I'm just gonna move that out of the way. There we go. Mine is messed up as well, but I just yeah. So I'm just gonna keep on a Discord like the Discord chat. There we go. Um, yeah, where's my camera? Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Well, my camera's not coming on now. <laughs> oh, disaster! Nice. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, well, um, let me hang, let me just try and work out what's going on with the camera. Hold on a second. Profile pic, QQ. Hmm? Nice profile pic. Fantastic. Yeah. Yay. I think I'm about to turn the stream off and then switch it back on again to get the camera on. Really? Oh. Yeah. You know what? I'll uh, actually let me hang. Let me. Yeah, I'm gonna have to turn off the stream and then switch on Discord again. Um, okay. Okay. I'll be right back, guys. All right. Don't. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. Don't be. Don't go away, people.